Israeli battle over kosher cell phones. Recently, many smartphone stores in Israel have been attacked by the Israeli ultra-Orthodox Jewish community, also known as the Haredi or Haredim, because they are angered that quote-unquote non-kosher smartphones are now readily available within the country. In B'nai Brak, the epicenter of Israel's ultra-Orthodox Jewish community and the economic power hub of the nation, riots occurred, and many cell phone stores were vandalized. In April, communications minister uh, Yoaz Hendel announced that smartphone companies must allow full accessibility on the so-called kosher lines. These kosher devices are devoid of the most necessary features that a smartphone has, including access to the internet, social media, and even domestic violence hotlines. These devices can only make or receive calls from similar kosher devices. According to the 39-year-old Uriel Diamant, an owner of a small cell phone store, quote, the strategy is to go shop to shop and intimidate the sellers. The demonstrators are lied to. They tell them that I'm selling iPhones with internet access to 13-year-olds, but that's not true. This is not about serving God. They're a mafia. So I thought that this was really interesting. Um, I really want to talk about this because I think that the, (laughs) how do I put this? The ultra-Orthodox Jewish community does not get enough credit for their, or they're not recognized as much as they should for their authoritarian, destructive cult practices. So this is essentially about authoritarian informational control, full stop. So what happened was the let's let's go back in time a little bit. The ultra orthodox community in the 60s banned like television. And now to this day less than half of Haredi households have a television. And then when cell phones started to come around, they were also banned uh because they are have secular content that is available to them because they have it's like opening a box to western influence, you know, quote unquote. Um it's, it's sinful. It's not godly. It gives you access to all of these ungodly things. Um, now, the problem is, is that this kind of technology is just a part of our lives now. And so people need to be able to access this as much as possible. So then over time, these the ultra-Orthodox community worked with a few cell phone carriers in Israel to craft these kosher cell phones that are basically very stripped down devices that have a, a specific area code so you can always know by the the number of the cell phone if it's kosher or not these kosher cell phones can only talk to they can only go, receive communications from other kosher cell phones so it's therefore forcing the con the conversations to only be within the community right and then tons of information is blocked with on on these phones so like I said, they won't call, they won't even call secular numbers. They quote unquote secular numbers. They won't call other government services like domestic violence hotlines, because that's something that's supposed to be handled within the community. And because recently the, what the interior minister said is like, we are no longer going to allow you to have this monopoly on these on these kosher cell phones like we are now mandating that the kosher cell phones have the ability to go communicate and call a non-kosher cell phone um and this has caused outrage and even riots and violence and property damage against those who sell cell phones um as just retaliation yeah by the way for them secular means anything that is not batshit crazy they call it secular um yeah i remember i when i was in tel aviv in israel there's we went to this part of tel aviv that was extremely religious and um that is specifically made for ultra orthodox people uh and they have their own set of laws separate from the rest of the city there there's like a jewish sharia law there basically um and the you know everybody is expected to act a certain way and people outsiders are looked with 
suspicion and people were not wearing the proper attire for that place. Women are very much controlled, very much. It's like um, they're completely take, kept in the dark, in a bubble. They are not meant to be informed um, about information that might lead them astray. Um, and that's why they have to be, you know, also, so the men have these phones that is only let them communicate with other men in that area, but the women shouldn't even have phones, you know, like women. Some of that them it, do. It, yeah, well, based on some, based on the understanding of some people there, the women shouldn't even have phones. Okay. And like, I'm not saying, I'm not talking everybody, like, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, there was a poster there that we, that was blaming a recent accident, a recent car accident in that area over women becoming more, more outside influence coming to women wearing clothes that are not traditional, like not uh, uh, kosher. By the way, people, some people are saying, why are they calling these cell phones kosher? Uh, they're not food. Okay. Kosher is like halal. Yeah. So a spider uh, in the left here is saying, how is a cell phone kosher? Kosher. You're not eating it. Kosher and it, halal. You could the... if you try hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think they, people misunderstand this about um, halal in Islam as well. People think halal means that you can eat it, right? Uh, halal is just the opposite of haram. Haram means Islamically prohibited. Halal means Islamically allowed, right? Um, the reason why non-Muslims associate halal with food is because... Um, that's where they see it the most, right? So for example, sex with your wife is halal, sex with somebody you're not married to is haram, right? One of them is allowed, the other one is halal. Your wife, I was gonna say your wife, you can't eat your wife, but I just realized that you can and you should. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so that's a different topic, sorry. Um, but anyways, you just get it. So kosher, again, having sex with your wife is kosher, Having sex with someone else's wife is non-kosher, right? Um, yeah, so halal and kosher are basically kind of the same thing. Um, oh, I remember there were some feminist groups that um, in within this area is in um, the religious part of Tel Aviv that put, come and put posters because the posters, because people don't have the women, a lot of the women don't have, are not allowed to have even these kosher cell phones, right? So the way that they are communicate the way they are informed about things within the community is through posters on the walls right that's how oh, that's cool. how where they get yeah they have no they have no access to newspaper secular newspapers or anything outside of their community so they just these posters are where you meant to understand what's going on right and some feminists go and put posters pretending like they're religious posters right and blaming the secularists and the evil people from outside coming in and meddling into the religious affairs but there are hidden messages within those posters they're like mm -hmm. criticizing them but also informing of their existence so they're trying to put secret messages for for women within these communities by making them aware of these other groups that are available to them if they want by attacking them it's a very do you understand what i'm saying yeah, so yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the men, like for example, you said these cell phones are, don't ha don't have access to domestic violence. You know that's what one reason why that's very telling. Okay, mm -hmm. because domestic making domestic violence phone numbers not being av available is because they want to be able to have full control over the woman. Like you, you, this is not something you should be able to complain to um, outside of the community. All right, the state but, isn't going to come help you. Yeah, the state, like if we beat you, it's not the state is not going to, you know, you shouldn't be able to have access to the state. And again, the state allows this for them to be able to remove this, all these services that are available to all other Israelis. It's not available to the women in these communities. And the it's state obscene. Is too, yeah. And the state is too scared of these religious communities to go and be like, no, this has to be available to women. These are Israeli women. And this is a service as an Israeli citizen. These services should be available to them. Like this is like... This is the religious community in Israel is too powerful for the government to step in. Like it's a political suicide for you to be able to challenge some of these uh, communities, right? But, but again, like trying to a lot of secular and feminist activists are trying very hard to find ways to make these women 
aware that there are legal ways out of this life for them. Because that if they these, have rights? Yes, because a lot of them don't know. Okay. And if just if they just knew, if they just had that information, there's nothing like what if they step out of the community and go to and go get a lawyer or go get like make a complaint, nobody can stop these women anymore. So the men in this community, they know that the only thing for a lot of these women, the only thing that is standing between them having control over these women and them losing control over this woman is just a little bit of information. Just a little bit of information will mean that they will lose all the control they have over this woman. And that's why they're so obsessed, so obsessed with limiting the information coming into this community. And that's why they're scared of the internet. They are terrified about it. And, and they have been so successful, and even until now, where internet is spreading everywhere. Internet is like, imagine like in the most um, farthest places in the villages in Africa, people are, little kids are having access to the internet. Yet in the heart of Tel Aviv, which is the, one of the centers of entrepreneurship in a country that is famous for its tech industry, these religious people have managed to make it so that the internet has not yet arrived there. It's a, it's right? a self-imposed ghetto. Yes, exactly. It's yeah, so it's crazy. A, like, I feel so strongly about like it. I it actually makes me very frustrated when the people don't realize how deeply sexist like Judaism is. And yeah also how this is this is the behavior of an authoritarian destructive cult mm -hmm. it's it's textbook behavior it's one of the most successful implementations of a regime of thought reform like if yes. you go look at the the psychological study of cult control this is like a play-by-play -play of how you have to control every single aspect of a her person's environment including their ability to access basic information so that their brain can't even see light outside of the cage that you've enforced around them. It's so insidious. And in response to this new ordinance that, they, that the interior minister put forward, that people were losing their minds. There was one person that commented in an article I read that said that this action regarding the kosher cell phones was worse than the big H. Worse than what happened to the, the Jewish community during World War II. I laughed out loud. I was like, that is the most obscene disrespect to your ancestors I could conceptualize. Like, are you crazy? This is worse than that? Because they see yeah. it as, they see it as essentially equivalent to foreign nations enforcing laws that make Jewish practice illegal. I, but by the way, they, they managed to enforce this in the Jewish community in New York as well. The Jewish, the religiously Jewish part of New York, they don't, they have their similar restrictions. I know I had a Jewish, I had a Jewish friend within New York that he is like, he didn't have access to the internet until way into his teens, right? And he, he like eventually when he came out of that bubble and discovered the internet, he was fascinated. He was so obsessed with Wikipedia. He was like, I could not believe all this information exists just available to everybody. He was like spending so much time just going through Wikipedia articles, just reading it, like so addicted to it, right? It was so cute. It's actually, it like, you guys yeah. can go watch a documentary about Armin's yeah. friend, Ari Hershowitz. I, it's on yes. Netflix, and I think it's called One of Us. And yes. it's about people who leave the cult conditions of the Haradim community. Um, yeah. Guys, really, like they, it's a really great documentary. Guys, like within the like Jewish, the Jewish uh, laws within the Jewish community in New York, the religious part is more strict than on women, for example, than than Iran. Like the segregation, the standards that they have for women there in New York City, women are under more strict laws and the, and the jewish community than they are in iran a woman in iran go watch that documentary it's one of us it's like very eye-opening mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. the the fact that in the middle of new york you could 
segregate a community like that and keep them that uninformed is unbelievable how re how religious communities are able to do that anyways let's read some comments um oh yeah we have a lot of good comments um so kenny delmar so it's saying it's cell phone with imposed religious censorship yes completely and promoted and facilitated through cell phone carriers you participate in this um oh. Asian american is saying why are abrahamics like this <laughs> you know, this yes, is a good question i continue to ask myself why is it so authoritarian oh my god um well i mean i guess it's because you know our, our whole purpose in life is to worship a celestial dictator so that might explain some of the behavior <laughs> um d is saying it's just anti-modernity yes a lot of this is fixated on anti-modernity and a lot of people are confused because they're like wait is it like is jewish israel is this considered part of the west i'm confused it's it, it goes back to yeah just uh, forces against liberalism forces against modernity and enlightenment um ghost bunny is saying Sounds like they are trying to break off from outside civilizations. Imagine having family that you can't call because the family doesn't have a kosher cell phone. That's the entire point. Oh. Is that your family well, actually, will have a kosher cell phone? No, no, okay. If you leave that community, you have to worry about more than your family not being able to call you. Your family will ostracize you and uh, your family will consider you like a, a, you know, a shameful and disgusting and vile they and, might send people after you yeah 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 so it's more it's yeah it's a lot worse than just not being able to call them maybe you, you, you will gonna... you will is responding to gaijin americans question as a, a fellow <laughs> ex-jew saying we abrahamics are like this because our founding father was a psycho willing to kill his own son <laughs> 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 you will you make a good point <laughs> that's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's the best line ever and <laughs> that's good yeah <laughs> that, should, that should be framed yeah ghost bunny is saying i have expected something like this from islamic countries i don't know why this surprises me as much as it does that's what i'm saying like the goings on of these ultra orthodox communities don't get as much scrutiny or recognition as they should because the lives for many people in them are hell um, okay but also, please recognize that Islam is a Jewish cult. Okay, so Islam is an offshoot of Judaism. So technically, point yeah. taken. Um, oh, wait, no, I respond to that. Okay. Uh, Forever Stormy is saying, I mean, God sent Moses a bunch of tablets. Maybe he can now send some phones. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, Doorknob Head is making the good point the internet where religions go to die. Yeah, that's part of why this is obviously so heavily controlled. Um, Gaijin American is saying, sounds like Gilead. What the F? Meaning the the Handmaiden's Tale. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Handmaiden's Tale was originally based off of the status of women in Iran, though. Yeah, I heard that. Is um, You know, when I was watching... Like, we don't have was... to make it a fantasy. Like, it's been happening for 40 years. Like <laughs> it, It's so much like the in the 80s in iran like so much maybe not now as much but gilead and iran in the 1980s are very very similar but yeah well something we're going to talk about next week which i just heard about is now iran has started pregnancy patrols what yeah That's so we're going to talk about that next week talk about talk about handmaid's tale they've started pregnancy patrols oh my god okay wow so yeah. yeah 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 i think it's important to talk about that because a lot of people in the u.s are like oh my god roe v wade i mean this is important right like that is uh, important. Don't, handmaid's don't tale me. blah 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 and i'm like yeah we're in a bad situation i wouldn't negate that but like the, we we have a much better more equivalent example and we just ignore it so yeah okay but like that's important too what's happening in the u.s yeah so. of course yeah you will is saying one of the political battles Haredi wage in Israel is preventing core subjects being taught to their kids. Yes, this is a huge scandal in the um, in the Jewish community in Brooklyn as well. That 
all these yeshivas don't teach American citizens basic subjects. So they have no knowledge so that they can go get a job. Well, that's part of the point. So they're stuck within the community. And these that's are, not part of the point. That's the entire point. Corruption within New York government institutes that allow these yeshivas to continue not educate American children. Guys, yeah, but Susie, that's not part of the point. That's the entire point. And imagine how evil that is. We want our children to be uneducated so that they are reliant on our community always and they cannot set themselves free and leave the community. You're handicapping your own children on purpose with the intention of keep, keeping them tied to the community. That's like some of evil. them are barely taught English. Mm. Unbelievable. Um, they understand education is empowerment and they don't want you to be empowered. Um, by the way, people are shocked about what you just said. So you guys better subscribe and hit the bell notification because we're going to cover this next week because something I don't remember is saying pregnancy patrols and a whole bunch of uh, question marks. Oh, yeah. It's a uh, whole story. Kenny is saying, okay, now I'm curious. What do you mean by pregnancy patrols? Okay. So, oh, you know, just week. some, just some good old fashioned fascist okay. trying to forcibly increase the, uh, population growth okay don't tell them because we they have to tune in next week no i know i'm, I'm no that that's that's a broad description okay, okay hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe we will send you a free copy of our blasphemous art ebook and let me tell you it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below